Welcome to the Land Cruiser Project. What we do on this channel is review online listings for 80 series, 100 series, and 200 series Land Cruisers. And we do this to, in order to identify common issues that show up on these vehicles as they age, make sure sellers are disclosing everything in their listings, at least as far as we can tell. And then finally, these discussions are interesting and I think they can be helpful if you're in the market for a Land Cruiser. So let's go ahead and check out a vehicle that is a Land Cruiser, not Land Cruiser in name, this 1997 LX450. Uh, this is the second year of the LX450, the kind of the first generation, I guess you'd call it, of the LX450. But yeah, really, <laughs> really just an 80 series Land Cruiser that's yeah, kind of been dolled up a little bit. This current Vehicle is bid to five thousand dollars. It's got six days left, and yeah, beautiful black color here. Uh, looks like some modifications, and yeah, we'll go ahead and get into the details as we go through this listing here. Uh, so it's located in Hewlett Harbor, New York. It's got one hundred and forty-six thousand miles, which is tremendously low. Uh, a very good number there. Black onyx paint, beige leather upholstery. What's interesting on black onyx paint? Uh, yeah, the, it, I'm assuming it's the 202 color code. We can verify that a little bit later. Uh, but yeah, the, the Land Cruise version is just called Black. The LX version, Black Onyx. <laughs> just kind of funny. Uh, so it's just got this locking center differential. No front and rear lockers. Has some aftermarket Stealth Custom Series wheels, a suspension lift kit, a Prinsu roof rack because hashtag that Prinsu life, hashtag Overlander. Okay, I'm done. And yeah, it's got an Alpine stereo and clean Carfax report. Uh, it does say automatic climate control for the uh, yeah 40th anniversary and collector's editions, Land Cruisers, and for all LX 450s. Yeah, that's uh, that's the case. That It's got an automatic button. You kind of set the temperature and that's it. Now let's see. So getting into the description here on the left, we've got, yeah, the truck spent time in Pennsylvania. Again, a hard time, like it was in prison until it was acquired by the seller in 2021. And it now shows 146,000 miles. It's offered at no reserve. That's me clapping with a clean Carfax report and a clean New York title in the seller's name. The truck is finished in, yeah, the 202 color code, which uh, for Lexus snottiness is black onyx. For Land Cruiser uh, utilitarian purposes, it's just black with gray lower cladding and features a powered sunroof, rear sliding windows, rear window deflector, tinted rear windows, and a rear window wiper. Yes, yeah, so all that's yeah, pretty standard there. It's got a Prinzo roof rack and LED light bar aftermarket side steps which yeah, kind of seem more like sliders to me. We'll, we can try and verify that too. And LED exterior lighting lights have been installed. Uh, let's see. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, I don't see those. But anyway, so we've got 16-inch Stealth Custom Series F5 alloy wheels. Uh, they're in a matte jet black, and they've got yeah 315 75R16 tires, so those are going to be 35s. And yeah, my terrain with 2022 um, date codes. Braking is handled by ventilated discs. Okay. This other report reports that an old man emu suspension lift kit has been installed. Yeah, we've got a little like stink bug going on here. The, uh, yeah, the usually depending on the kit, of course, but yeah, sometimes these old man emu kits, like the two and a half inch kit, they, um, yeah, they need a little bit of help in the front until you put some weight on the back. Uh, in any case, yeah, the seats look pretty good. Uh, let's see. Yeah, for 150 something thousand miles, yeah, those could be original, I think. I think, well, there we go, I guess. <laughs> they look pretty good enough that, yeah, that kind of fooled me. So the interior upholstery is said to have been replaced recently, and the wood trim around the center dash vent is broken. I don't know if I'd call it broken, but like, yeah, delaminating. Um, but yeah, also note that these pieces are a little bit different. So we'll want to verify. So some of these, like the switch, uh, it's like a, it's, it's part of the piece. It's not something you can peel off like on the Land Cruiser. But perhaps this clock surround is, um, yeah, is a veneer. So we'll, we'll verify that in the photos, assuming we get a detailed shot here. Uh, the seller added since 2021, 1,000 miles. So it looks like they weren't, um, yeah, driving it a whole lot. Skipping past that engine bay photo and holding judgment. <laughs> Same thing with the undercarriage. And yeah, we've got the Carfax report. So the Carfax report shows no accidents or other damage in this history in Pennsylvania and New York. And again, that is the description of the listing up till now. So let's go ahead and look at this Carfax report in detail. So we've got Pennsylvania and Pennsylvania and New York history. 
So usually a death sentence with regard to corrosion, at least for those of us that care. <laughs> I Every once in a while I get a comment, like, you don't know anything about rust, just put some poor 15 on it, it'll be fine. Yeah, if anybody has actual experience with putting poor 15 over a, even like a mildly... Let's say you have a rusted frame. This is a total diversion, but you've got a rusted frame. Let's say you take the effort and you even, you know, almost go so far as to, you know, wire wheel, get the frame reasonably clean. Maybe pour 15 would work, but for something that's like really rusted out and you just want to slather pour 15 over the top, which I'm pretty sure this commenter was alleging. Yeah, that's not going to end well. Lots of, yeah, lots of history and yeah, experience both firsthand and yeah, secondhand, thirdhand. <laughs> that's a bad, bad thing. You end up trapping the, the water and the rust in there. Yeah, it doesn't really work out. Anyway, so we've got through the first seven ish years, 60 something thousand miles, got, you know, maintenance records being logged here looks like some of them being done at um yeah just like a service station some of them being done at a buick gmc dealer because uh, that makes sense but yeah sitting here at about 10 years old seventy thousand miles uh in butler pennsylvania and then coming out of that 10 years and getting into the yeah, mid to late 2000s we do have a cell occurring in 2011 uh, and then yeah, maybe another change of hands here in 2012, another one. So yeah, not quite sure what's going on through this time period, but it's moving around Harrisburg, New Kensington. And then finally, we've got, yeah, hopefully a, it looks like a long-term owner here, uh, having it from 2014 through 16, where the last record we've got is 115,000 miles in 2016. So nothing between um, that time frame and now. We do have this auto auction uh, listing or uh, result here for November of 2021. So if we Google this in the VIN and, you know, we do come up with some photos, we do have a price, uh, we'll try and verify like the date and everything. But um, yeah, some of these, like at least, you know, reading it, you'd be like, oh, that looks, you know, wrecked Lexus LX 450 Salvin auction history. But if you click into it, and, you know, really kind of do your homework. You can kind of see what's going on. So I believe this is in just plugging in the VIN here with the control F. Uh, you can see it's these two listings. So it's a uh, not sure why it hit Copart. Uh, Copart, you know, they also auction clean titled vehicles. They're rare, but they're they're out there. And yeah, it's just a normal wear um, item here. Uh, this doesn't lift the price, list the prices, but these are from that time frame. So it looks like they... Um, yeah, it was auctioned twice. The first one maybe not getting sold. The second one, you know, kind of corresponding to our, um, well, actually the, the date was like what, November 1st. Um, if we pull up, yeah, so I'm not gonna be able to get past that without an account. There's another one of those links here from the soldvehicle.com. It's got a little bit more information showing that the final bid was 5,000 bucks. Uh, the mileage was 145. It says exempt. We've got a Pennsylvania certificate of title. And yeah, no estimated repair value. And let's just quickly go through the photos here. So we've got yeah, lots of character on the paint. We've got some interesting wheels that have been installed. Um, yeah, we've got some rust on the on the hatch. Looks like some of it is the upper hatch. Some of it's been addressed. Some of it or tried to have been addressed. Some of it has not. Quite a rusty vehicle, as you would expect from you know life in Pennsylvania. Yeah, I don't know if those uh, those repairs to the rear are approved, <laughs> but you can see the you know kind of delamination here of those uh, wood veneers on the on the vent here. A little mark here on the dash, just trying to identify some identif you know some uh, some features. Looks like perhaps the seats were redone at this point in 2021, which corresponds to the listing uh, nets. Sorry, I don't know why this keeps jumping around. The the nets are sagging. Uh, looks like they put something over that uh, that driver's seat to protect it. But moving here to the engine bay, yeah, we do see yeah quite a bit of corrosion. Not quite sure what this is. This is a big leaf, but we've got VIN stickers on both sides. We've got an unsecured battery. We've got the, the coolant overflow. Oh my, yeah. So this is probably part of like the auction process where people are like, hey, let's see if there's oil in the coolant. And yeah, they pull it off when it's hot and they probably melt their hand. So that's why you've got probably why well, you've got coolant residue all over the uh, yeah the cap here on the radiator. But yeah, the coolant reservoir overflows kind of tilted the wrong way. But there's some corrosion here on the front bracketry. 
Um, but yeah, 145,000 miles, and yeah, K292, and color code 202, so yeah, it's originally black, and yeah, that's all that one. Uh, vehicle history report, oh, by the way, so 5,000 bucks is what was reported there. And then vehicle history, they've got that listing in the photos, uh, but they don't have a price. So maybe in 2021, the seller picked this up for 5,000 bucks plus tax, whatever, registration. They've been driving it around, fixing it up. That's the story I'm going to tell myself. So let's go ahead and jump into the photos. And they've been preparing for their uh, yeah their 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 payday here. <laughs> so the day has finally come. Truck looks quite a bit different than what it did in those auction photos. Uh, looks pretty good. Impressions are good. I, I don't know. I'm not a big fan of the whole kind of like you know blacked out look. But you know it looks like a it looks like a pretty clean truck. They've done a lot of work on the paint. Obviously getting that yeah polished up. Yeah, that all looks just fine. All right, so remember, we had some pretty significant rust on the rear upper hatch. So once we get some zoomed in photos, we'll, yeah, we'll evaluate that. But as of right now, that looks pretty good. The emblem, right, these emblems are not in the right spot. Um, so that's an indicator that you can use for a vehicle that, um, you know, has been repainted. So... We know that something's happened back here. Either, the, either they fixed the rust. Remember, there's a pretty significant rust issue down here in the bottom left. Um, so did they get a new hatch? You would want to verify like a VIN sticker, things of that nature. But moving around this, I mean, it all looks pretty good. The um, I'm seeing down here with the mud flap. I'm not quite sure exactly what's going on. These mud flaps are supposed to be nice and flush with the bumper. I don't know if they're, I don't, I don't know what's going on there. Um, you can see up here, they've got these sliders, but... You know, they've left the spot there um, for the factory running board. But yeah, not sure what's going on there. And regarding the paint situation, I mean, I can I can see that, yeah, probably this upper hatch and lower hatch, that's been repainted. A uh, slight color difference there between that and the recorder. A little bit of haze finish difference. Um, so that's my suspicion there. Again, but I don't know if they took a green one from another vehicle and put it on there or not. Uh, looks like this lower trim kind of cladding that's been um, repainted as well. The gaps look pretty good. But yeah, this to me on the back here definitely reads is a like a repaint, but I can't. Well, obviously a repaint, but I can't quite tell if it's um, yeah brand new or not. Good for them for getting a matching third uh, or third third wheel uh, uh, spare tire here. Although that is hanging down so low. Yeah, 35 inch tires are not meant to go below <laughs> these trucks. Oh, uh, yeah, interesting. All right, so we've got a dent here on the rear quarter panel on the um, passenger side. Looks like maybe another one on the rear door on the upper part. And just some, you know, like light scratches, at least we can tell here, these photos. I don't understand why these photos are all in portrait mode. I wish they would have cropped them to get rid of all of the pavement and sky to get us more detail. But maybe we'll get into some detail shots here in a second. All right, so no surprise on the hatch that that has been repainted. I do have suspicion after looking at this photo that we've got a repainted hood as well. Um, there's some chips or something here. This gap is also really big. Not quite sure if the hood's been popped or not, but yeah, that gap kind of opens up quite quite bigly here towards the front. Uh, fender flare gaskets, those all look good. Let's get a nice square on shot. A little bit of scuffing and stuff on the front bumpers. Little bumper corners. All right, stop with these Instagram photos. God. All right, straight on shot here. We've got a little bit bigger gap on the, um, let's see, this is the passenger side compared to the driver's side. Not sure I'd yet say anything more about that. Uh, hard to tell what the gapping is here on the grill versus the valence. Uh, we'll note that they've maybe got a front like camera installed there. That's kind of interesting. Um, I mean, the bumper all looks good, though. And yeah, seems like that's all yeah, pretty much in order. I, yeah, I've got the impression that yeah, they've painted the hood as well. Okay, I don't need any more photos. What the fuck? God. Well, don't include those. Bring a trailer. Come on, you know better. Jesus. All right, sorry for the rant, but yeah, definitely hood's been repainted. You can see the rock chips. Um, you know, consistent amount from the fender and the lower valence, but then you get to the hood and it's sparkly clean. Same thing here on the driver's side. 
So I'm just really put off by all these Instagram photos. This is driving me nuts. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if I'm going to be able to finish reviewing this video without just cursing. Uh, all right, looking here at the rear quarter. Yeah, that all looks good. I, I don't know what's going on with this gap here between those, those mud flaps. It kind of boggles my mind. Uh, one of the spots that commonly rusts out on these is the mount for the second row seatbelt, the outboard seatbelt. And there's some different color down there. Hopefully we get a better photo of that to confirm what's going on there. Um, still interested. I don't, I don't know if the, uh, the tailgate was replaced and the upper hatch were replaced or not yet. But it seems more or less like put together. We've got a little texture going on here just on this little window, you know, trim. Um, the fender flare gasket's kind of peeling away a little bit. Yeah, I'm not going to... That's the less, least of your worries, I think, when we get to the undercarriage. Interesting that they called the slider steps in the description. They could have done a better bit job of um, getting attention to the uh, white knuckle brand and all that. All right, we've got a Prinsu rack up here. They did not install the... And maybe it doesn't come with it. I'd presume it comes with it, but maybe it doesn't. They did not install the, um, yeah, the little rubber piece, so that's going to probably end up Assuming you use this and put stuff on, it's going to end up yeah, grinding the paint down on your um, ceiling, your roof. <laughs> um, looking here around the windshield, I'm trying to gauge whether or not there's any like signs of like repaint, but yeah, I don't really see anything. Just kind of looks meh. Uh, same thing here on the hood. Just more confirmation that the hood got refinished. Uh, what is that in the little gutter here? I don't know what that is. It's not supposed to be there. <laughs> like, looks like somebody stuck a dime in there. Cue the headlines and everybody's like search feeds. Like if somebody leaves a dime under your windshield, do this first or something. Anyway, a fuel door. Yeah, that looks just fine. There's your white knuckle sliders. I mean, the, the paint overall looks pretty good considering they've adjusted that. I really wish that we could get yeah a better view of these, uh, the back end of the rockers. Although this is... Um, yeah, this is the front, but <laughs> I really want to see detailed shots of those. We've seen in a handful of vehicles from Rust Belt states where, yeah, like one rocker has been totally like rusted out, but yeah, we didn't get those, those details. All right. Looking at the driver door, this all looks normal. I do see a VIN sticker. You see the original, you know, VIN label for the vehicle. Uh, interesting pattern here on the, uh, yeah, the carpet and detail, uh, but it looks, yeah, it looks pretty good. We are missing the little screw that secures the dead pedal, and we've got um, yeah, people who can't lift their feet when they get in and out of their vehicle. Also, look at this. We've got some bubbly rust with um, some actual yeah, like rust residue going on beneath this. So I would pull that off and investigate. Uh, moving here to the rear door. Yeah, this looks fine. These brackets here for the fender flares, um, yeah, they're a little bit rusty, but yeah, don't, don't look too bad. Uh, courtesy lights off, but yeah, it's usually usually that's the case. Uh, and then yeah, we've got some weird discoloration here on the speaker cover, and ooh, there's our little fun friend, some bubbly rust right uh, at the back of the rear rocker, as you'd expect it. Moving to the passenger door. Ooh, we actually didn't look at this. Let's look at the other and see if we can get a good shot. All right, so look at the bottom of the driver door here on this bottom seam. It looks pretty good, right? Nice and consistent, no rusty rust. We look at the, ooh, I, and I miss this. Shame on me. I miss this on the rear door. Look at all this crust here. <laughs> That's nice right there at the bottom of the, uh, what, rear driver door. And then when we move over to the passenger side and that passenger front door, more rusty rust. And yeah, can't can't tell here on the rear passenger door. But the carpet, the stripes in the carpet, that's nice. It's really nice. <laughs> uh, yeah, so definitely a replacement kit here. Looks like that's the Land Cruiser Heaven label uh, right there. And yeah, overall looks good. The center console for the LX450 is a little bit different than the Land Cruiser. You can see it's kind of got like a little speaker. Uh, you don't get the little useless kind of cubby or tray. Useless cubby, got to be, <laughs> be, be worried about using that term because that's used for the useless cubby in the dash. Um, but the seat leather looks yeah quite good. And yeah, it looks like that included probably the, um, the armrest on the doors and the center console. That all looks just fine. 
Uh, I've got some cable hanging down here. I'm assuming that's for this aftermarket stereo. And then they've uh, drilled into the center console to install a 3D printed cup holder. Uh, steering wheel's got some texture to it along the seams and along the top. Looks like the dash is intact. Uh, shifter handle's got a little bit of wear. Uh, all of that's yeah, pretty consistent for a vehicle that's kind of you know been parked. I don't know outside, but you know, seen some use. And yeah, just confirmation from earlier in the video where we were talking about these wood veneers. Yeah, it looks like these ones at least um, not on the door. They can be you know peeled off with just a little bit of effort. I'd assume that switch for the light bar. But yeah, it looks like somebody's drilled something into the to the lower dash there. But yeah, one hundred forty six thousand one hundred and I think ninety six miles. Uh, photos taken with the engine off, so nothing really to gleam there. But then yeah, back to the point. Look at the center console here. Uh, well, sorry, the clock above. That um, yeah, that veneer can be pulled off. There's the broken, useless cubby, and then yeah, but this wood veneer around the HVAC controls, this wood veneer on the little ashtray, and that can all be peeled off, but not the center console. You're kind of stuck with that. And yeah, a little bit of texture on that shifter handle as we saw in the other photo, but appreciate the detail. And look at this, there is the seal. It is there, the little seal that separates the two console pieces. So whoever buys this, take out no, and that screw's not in straight. <laughs> anyway, take out the four screws that hold this in, the this front center console piece, and get that seal in the right spot, just so I can sleep at night, please. All right. Uh, let's see, we've got some, like, screws or something in the little cup holder here. I wonder where those go. <laughs> oh, and see, you can see the seal. The seal's actually on the side here. So, interesting. I'm not sure I make such a big deal about that. Oh, I know why. It's because I bought one for my 95, sold the truck to somebody, they lost it, and then, uh, or the, yeah, they took it to a Land Cruiser specialist shop to get the heater core replaced, and yeah, they lost the seal, and they yeah, didn't attach all the center console pieces. So that's why So I had to find another one, and they're discontinued now. Anyway, the, th the step here for the third row, that is missing the little nuts. Those are available from Wits End if you want to order from them second row looks just fine again the the nuts on these little whatever you want to call them missing is an indicator that yeah maybe the carpet's been taken out to get cleaned which um you know you might ask was it so bad to need to be cleaned uh, you know just to give you an idea for the condition of the truck and a you know somebody not particularly interested in you know preserving the vehicle they would you know, not really care about the little nuts that hold those down. Uh, let's see. We do not have the little plastic feet for the back, at least some, at least one of the front row seats. Uh, some staining here in the back right part of the cargo area in the carpet. Otherwise, the carpet looks you know, good, well shampooed and well cleaned. And yeah, it looks like this uh, the, the leather replacement kit for the, um, for the vehicle yeah, came with the third row as well. Okay, here in the rear cargo area, there's a couple kind of telltales that we have for the corrosion situation, seeing these bolts rusted out on the stopper. Uh, yeah, that's not a good sign. Um, yeah, other than that, that all looks just fine. Kind of interesting that the LX doesn't have the speakers in the rear cargo area like the, the Land Cruiser does. Normally those are cut in here in the, uh, in the headliner. I really want to see some VIN stickers back here, but I don't know if we're going to see them because it's on this thing, this bottom edge. But that seems, the bottom seems, yeah, original. Um, good shots of the headliner. Uh, let's see the plastic around the sunroof that is intact, indicating that yeah, they probably haven't had any issues with it. The visor seems to be staying up, and yeah, here we go into the engine bay. So we still have VIN sticker on the driver's side. We've got lots of corrosion here, some, you know, on the aluminum surfaces, which yeah, kind of sometimes makes me a little bit a little bit nervous. Uh, even rust here on the air box. So again, we've already established that this one's going to be yeah, a little bit of a yeah, rust issue, but we've got a VIN sticker here on the passenger side fender as well. Let me zoom in on these bolts here. So those bolts for the hood, those have been removed, which further supports my theory that the uh, the hood's been repainted. Um, yeah, radiator seems new. They got most of that residue cleaned up from yeah the <laughs> the people at the auctions. Uh, let's see, 
here at this little fender seal, we've got one of the bolt holes here where this oil pressure sending unit cable plugs in. Uh, we've got some pretty good gnarly corrosion going on there. And then also the kind of top of the frame here where the motor mount attaches. Yeah, we've got some corrosion there. We'll also note one of the bolts for the exhaust shields missing. Um, so these are all indications of too much rust for the Land Cruiser project, but I know some of you, you love rust. You love just, love just screwing around with your vehicle and cutting stuff off and using torches and stuff. Uh, we've got an unsecured battery still, so in the two years of ownership and 1,000 miles and rest, quote, you know, air quotes here, restoration work, weren't able to secure that battery. Um, yeah, that whatever's going on there, this is for the um, little squirters for the windshield. Yeah, that's not secured properly, but you know, least of your issues. Looks like the brake booster's been replaced as well. We do have some new hoses, at least for the um, for the evaporative emission system. All right, moving here to the front. This is where in the undercarriage. This is where it's going to get interesting. So. Yeah, so looking here at this kind of front cross member, I guess maybe I'm not used to looking at it like this, but yeah, there's like a legit hole in this little like side support piece. Lots of corrosion on the body mount. Um, we've, it looks like some effort has been made to kind of clean this up a little bit. But yeah, we've got yeah, quite a bit of rust here on this, um, what, pan hard, you know, bracket, whatever this thing's for, for this bar. Lots of texture on the front axle looking back towards the back of the vehicle and the skid plates and like the fuel tank skid plate and the transmission cross member. That stuff's really crusty. I mean, God, I don't even know what's going on here with this knuckle. Again, oh, look at that. The driver's side one's even worse. There's just so much grease on there. So again, in the, and again, I don't blame them, but in the two years or whatever of yeah, rehab work, yeah, they, they didn't address some of this stuff. Um, it's it's going to, not a big deal. That's, you know, how they choose to, yeah, to proceed, but it's going to affect the value of the vehicle. But yeah, this little bracket in the frame here, this looks a little scary, um, yeah, to be honest. Uh, better shots here. Another spot that likes to corrode on these is right where in the fender apron, all these seams come together. It looks like there's a little rust coloration there. Um, the lower radiator, like core support, that looks just fine. But yeah, lots of, lots of texture here on this kind of front frame cross member. Yeah, let's move back. And this is like notwithstanding like the little bolts that are all rusted. Yeah, those are probably all just going to break whenever you look at them. All right. This is looking just underneath the driver uh, here on the floor. There's the body mount. Yeah, you see some rust there. You'd really want to be concerned. Is, is that coming from above or below? Uh, you've got rust here on this mount here for the lower control arm on the passenger or on the driver's side. And then even some rust here like in the body. That's, yeah, that's not a good sign. Um yeah, let's let's keep working our way around this thing. Looks like the engine and the you know it's all relatively dry, so like that's good. But yeah, look at the sway bar mount and the frame here. We've got like laminating metal. The is this the oil pan oil pan uh, plug? Looks like that hasn't been turned in like decades. That's insane. When was the last oil change? Show me the documented oil change. Oh my gosh! All right. Yeah, looking at the rest of this, yeah, this is not the condition of vehicle you want to buy. Yeah, this is, oh, this is no bueno, no bueno at all. Yeah, does you tell me, looking at that oil pan drain plug, right? That's the plug that you would take out to change the oil on this vehicle. Does that look like that's been touched anytime soon, like in the last two years? Yeah, I don't think so. Uh, better photo here of the, yeah, the bottom of the rockers. Yeah, those are all just rusting out. How is this already up to 5,000 bucks for the interior? I mean, this is mostly, you know, like salvage, right? And sorry to be hard on the seller, but yeah, this is, this is not good. Uh, so, so this vehicle, I believe would have the rear heater. What you're seeing here is a capped rear heater hose. Um, yeah, probably because the hard lines kind of rusted away. The exhaust is long gone, obviously, as are the shields and yep. Lots, lots of, lots of crustiness going on here, but it's got sliders. That's, they should have instead of, never mind. All right. Fuel tank is very, very crusty. Oh, and for those that 
think that like poor 15 is a good idea, like this is what it can look like is you're just covering it up and it just flakes off and you're left with this nightmare. So yeah, again, it may look okay for a little bit, but then it starts, the rust starts creeping out through that coating and yeah, you're left with this. Uh, almost a legit hole <laughs> in the body here towards the rear. Lots of rust here at the rocker. Uh, do I, do I need to say more? Do I need to keep, I mean, you can see it with your own eyes. There's just lots of, lots of rust going on here. Hmm. Waiting for the comment, the inevitable comment where somebody says, Oh, that's not bad. I live in, I live in, Oh yeah. I live in Quebec and we're used to much worse than this or whatever. Anyway. Yeah, this bracket for the exhaust is like entirely gone, <laughs> like rusted out and missing. Uh, the sway bar, this thing like isn't even roadworthy. So look at the sway bar mount here and the bushings. Like there's not actually any, like you could grab that with your hand and it would go clink, 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 clink. Yeah, but this is what poor 15 looks like over a rusted frame. So to that commenter, yeah. yeah. Maybe if you think that rust is okay, yeah, maybe and just putting poor 15 over it and putting that crap in my comments, yeah, maybe this isn't the right channel for you. <laughs> uh, we've got a rusted out uh, brake shield, you know, like the dust shield on the back of the rotor. Yeah, I, I wouldn't, again, this is what poor 15 looks like over this. I'm going to say it over and over again. People think whether it's, and I'm picking on poor 15, but whether it's some Eastwood product or anything else, like this is what it looks like. You've, you've got to get down to bare metal if you're going to re remediate some of this stuff. All right. This one's going to be interesting. So this is above how, what I want to know is how is this rusted, uh, spare tire carrier supporting and holding this 35, uh, look here at the seam. So this is the bottom. So think of like right here is like the floor of the rear quarter. And then it curves, you know, out of the screen downward. And you can see it's like fully, I believe it's showing this is fully like separated and delaminated and like that's a legitimate hole. So if you were to pull off, let's say the little thing where the spare tire or not the spare, well, the spare tire kit, you know, the jack and everything, you would be able to reach your hand all the way down and have your fingers come out through here. So yeah, that's fun. Uh, missing bolts for the flaps and yeah, whatever's going on there. Yikes. Yeah, this one's actually exquisitely bad. Exquisitely bad. This uh, bottom of the, on this side, this, this is the, the passenger side. This one looks a little bit better. See how it's kind of like all one piece and we don't have like that waviness, but I mean, there's still a yeah, significant amount of rust here. Hmm. There's just, there's a lot, there's a lot going on here. That's probably why this thing was at auction in 2021 is because it wasn't roadworthy because of rust issues. And it said, you know, it runs and drives, but they didn't say that, you know, it's all rusted out. So, um, yeah, good thing it's no reserve. So who's right now, who is going to get stuck with this thing? <laughs> That's what I want to know. So current high bidder is Ray Father. Ray Father, do you know what you're getting yourself into? I don't know. I don't know if they know. This one would have been a better buy. <laughs> anyway, we'll we'll see. We'll see where this one goes. <laughs> These comments, fun, Jimin. Uh, ha, well, myself and fellow Northeasterners are looking at all this quote corrosion and drooling. Somebody says, after I saw this, I went out in my garage with a headlamp and looked for any rust on the underside, scraped it and put rust converter on it. It was a good reminder about what can happen in a left of, if left untreated. Now, I believe this was treated at some point. Don't kid yourself. Just scraping it off. I don't know what you're scraping it off with, but you've got to yeah, actually put some more, some more effort into that. Uh, like others in the comments, interested to hear what shops has said about repairing the frame. Okay, so what's going on with the frame? What are we, what are we talking about? Oh, so that's it. Unless it's in like the previous comments. No, that's it. So there's no, I don't know what he's getting at with the frame um, comment, but yeah, it's obviously not looking good. Maybe that's this pick 136. We'll take a look at that. I don't believe this is triple lock, no magic dial. and doesn't indicate that it's in the description. Yeah. So who's this IT chip triple lock? Looks like a nice example. Yeah, somebody says here, yeah, P Theory says, man, I love, man, love the look, but the underside corrosion is rough uh, to the point I'm not sure it's fixable. Please correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, it is quite rough. 
great looking. I'm curious where the oil changes have been. Hey, they did it. Uh, and they made the comment, Surf Scout 77, way to go. Uh, it appears to have been cosmetically refreshed and not driven much since the previous owner hasn't spent a lot of the time in the shop. Yep. Interesting. Interesting. All right. So yeah, price-wise, this is already overpriced. Um, I Yeah. Unless you... And see, so this is the thing. You may say, oh, let's swap out the frame. But like the body's got significant rest on it as well. So I, I don't I don't know really what's worth saving besides, um, yeah, glass. And again, it's a running vehicle. That's great. But um, all right. So regarding value and putting a number on this, I don't know, 7,500. That's way too... No, I'm not even going to say that. It's already bid too high. Um, I'm going to say predicted price is $5,000 and hopefully it stops at that point. So sorry for the seller. I know there's almost as much money in wheels and tires as it's worth in my opinion. Um, I mean, between the sliders, uh, the detail, the wheels and tires and the rack. Um, yeah, that's, that's, that's worth more than what the vehicle is worth. Crazy, huh? Anyway, mm, yeah, stay away from this one. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for taking your time to check it out and have a great day.